Thank you so much, Nate. Um, welcome everyone to another Artist Loft 101 drawing class. Um, I'm honored to be partnering with Michael to bring you this ongoing drawing series. And uh, I know we've had a lot of folks who have been joining since the beginning. So welcome back and welcome for those of you who are just joining tonight. Uh, like Nate said, I'm really excited about uh, tonight's class because it is something that I teach in every class that I've ever taught. This is always kind of a little side lesson that I, I sneak in there um, pretty close to the beginning to try to get my students to practice what we're learning in the class um, outside of the class. Because if you're not giving uh, your art practice um, some attention every day, it's really hard to develop a muscle memory. Um, so. I'm Adrian Hodge, by the way, and uh, I'm a teaching artist based in Austin, Texas. And um, yeah, I'll go ahead and switch over to my tabletop view here. So if you want to follow me on Instagram and see what else I'm up to, you can follow me at Adrian Hodge Art. And please tag anything that you make from from tonight's practice class uh, with Make It With Michael's or Michael's classes. And there's my website and you can find me on Facebook, my email, all that good stuff. Okay, so um, I'll just go ahead and dive in because there's a lot of stuff that we're gonna cover tonight. Um, here's a few more of my, my personal work on my, my business cards. I always have to sneak some of that in there um, for anybody who's interested in in what I do outside of teaching, because I am a, a practicing professional artist, in addition to a, a well, that's the that's the artist part of teaching artists is that I you know practice what I preach. Um, yeah, I was even running late on the way here because I was to my studio because I was dropping off work for a group exhibition that I'm in uh, starting next week. Anyway, uh, so. What I asked folks to get for the, the class tonight was a small sketchbook, the three and a half inch by five and a half inch uh, Artist Loft sketchbook, um, a Artist Loft 101 sketching set, which comes with um, charcoal pencils, a few graphite pencils, an eraser, a synthetic eraser, a kneaded eraser, uh, some charcoal sticks, a 0.3 Artist Loft illustration pen, which we'll be using a lot. And there's the, the graphite pencils that come in the set. There are a few tortillions or blending stumps. And also this handy dandy viewfinder. So those are all the things that come in the Artist Loft 101 set that was on the supply list. And then I added the Artist Loft mesh bag. Okay, so the mesh bag may seem like an extra accessory, but it actually plays in in a very big way to uh, the, the theme for the night, which is developing and uh, starting and developing or maintaining a sketchbook practice, however I worded it. All of those things are true. Okay, so, and then the last thing that I have here on my table that's not on the, the supply list, uh, because if you're, you know, on a phone or a computer, then you have access to one of these and that's a, a timer. Um, but I just love a kitchen timer like this that shows the, um, the minutes that are passing. And so uh, I've got a timer, but I'll, I'll be using this a little bit in the, the class, but outside of the class, when you do what we're talking about tonight, you can always just use the, the timer on your phone or, you know, the timer on your stove or, um, you know, there's websites you can pull up a, a timer or stopwatch, however you, you prefer to do it. Okay, so this is a very mental based Thing, what we're talking about tonight. The drawing prompts are, are going to be very uh, secondary. So the first thing I want to talk about is accountability. I've got all my, my notes here instead of doing a, a PowerPoint slideshow. I thought I'd just put everything on post-it notes tonight. Um, so mental cues for work, for work time, for getting started. So there are a number of things that you can do to 
create a mental cue for yourself that it's time for your daily art practice. But I'm getting ahead of myself just a little bit. Why is it important to have a daily practice? Let me get some answers in the chat. Why do you think that it's important to have a daily practice when it comes to developing a skill or maintaining a skill? So this class was listed as for intermediate. So assuming we've already got some skills tonight, what are some reasons for having a daily practice? I'm gonna let Nate filter yeah. those answers to me. Yeah, absolutely. We got a number of answers in here. So uh, Heli mentions, if you don't use it, you lose it, of course. Uh, okay. Habits take time to develop from Mafe. Uh, to get better and better every day, says Eric. Muscle memory, says Chris. Self-care even as well is another good one. Oh, I love it. Okay, yeah, those are all great answers. And when Nate and I were talking before the class, I even said that, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it, exactly. Um, there are some great quotes out there by a famous artist that I love to quote when I'm, I'm talking about this. One is Picasso uh, said, the muse exists, but it has to find you working. Oftentimes we tend to think that you have to be inspired to do your your art practice or to you know work on your art but many of us who you know have a creative practice as our jobs will tell you that you know it's very easy to get into a uh, you know a block where you like writer's block or a creative block where you feel like you're not churning out the the product that you're used to and the easiest way to get past that is to work. If I'm feeling like I'm unmotivated and uh, I'm not making things that are satisfying me or that I'm happy with um, in my work, or I'm just getting bored with the types of things that I'm making, um, I do all the things that I'm gonna talk about tonight to get myself inspired again. But if I just sit around waiting for that inspiration to strike, I'm gonna be waiting a long time if I'm in a rut, you know? So uh, yeah, the muse exists, but it finds you working. And uh, there's another quote by the, the now late Chuck Close who just passed, passed away um, recently. And I'm paraphrasing, um, but it was very similar to the Picasso quote. And it's basically, you know, when you work, something occurs to you and then something else occurs to you. And then as you continue working, more things occur to you. And then you start to make these connections and that's when the magic starts to happen. So, um, and I just mutilated that Chuck Close quote, but you can look it up if you want to read exactly how he said it. Um, so yeah, uh, but how do we make ourselves sit down and do that practice, right? It's the end of the day. It's, uh, you know, been a stressful full day. I'm going to switch back, Nate, to my uh, just face view, just since I'm, I'm chatting so much here, it always feels weird when I'm just like talking with my hands. Um, you know, I'm a, a single mom. And so I know just as well as anyone what it's like to, um, you know, punch out for the day when my kids are finally in bed and I haven't practiced, um, you know, what the skill that I'm trying to learn, which I've, I've told you guys who, uh, you know, I've been coming back, you're probably getting sick of me talking about my, my guitar lessons, but, you know, if I don't put in that 20 minutes a day of practicing my guitar, I'm going to lose that muscle memory that I've been developing. So uh, last week's class on lines and tones was kind of all about those drills that uh, we can practice when we're at the end of the day, when we're not feeling inspired, right? So I'm going to give you a lot of drawing prompts tonight, but First, I want to talk about just getting started, you know, like, because the whole aspect of just fighting that resistance in our brain to even pulling out the art supplies and sitting down to work when the, you know, all you want to do is turn on Netflix and, you know, clock out for, for the day. So um, mental cues for work. So something that um, I like to do and that I started doing when my kids were babies, when I only had um, the, the nap time, you know, when my daughter, when it was just uh, my daughter, who's the oldest, um, when she was a baby and she would go down for her nap, I realized I had such limited time. So I would have these certain things that I would do to signify to my brain that it was time to do my, my work, my art practice. 
And so for me, it's putting on a podcast. Um, when I put on a podcast, that's kind of, you know, the, the talking and I sit down with my art supplies, something about that, it's hard for me to do anything but just listen and then start to draw. So um, for me, it's a podcast. It could be a certain music for you. Um, I have friends who told me they put on like a specific uh, article of clothing, like a big comfy sweatshirt. Um, and my aprons are across the room, but that also used to be something that would help me when I was uh, trying to develop a daily practice with my art was I would put on my apron and it just feels kind of silly to be like sitting around watching Netflix in my apron, right? So I've got my apron on and it's time to make some art. So whatever you can do to signify to your brain that it is now work time uh, for, for artwork. So putting on that comfy sweatshirt, that's your art sweatshirt or your apron if you like aprons, even though we're just gonna be drawing. Although we might get a little messy here uh, with some of this. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and switch back to my tabletop view, Nate. All right, so mental cues for work time. What can you do to signify to yourself that it's time to work? If it's really just the Netflix is calling and you have no energy left, then that's where the, the mesh bag comes in and the timer, because you can put everything in this Artist Loft 101 it um, set into this little pouch, even the kitchen timer could fit in there. And then that is a portable art desk now. And you can just have that sitting there on the couch next to the remote so that when you're, you know, you don't want to do anything else for the day, it's so easy to just pull it out and sketch while you're watching TV. And I wanted to uh, practice everything that I'm telling you guys tonight. So I just got this sketchbook from Artist Loft about a week and a half ago. And everything that I drew in here, I did while sitting in front of the TV, watching uh, reruns of an old favorite show. So um, you can do this while you're sitting on the couch um, and just, you know, give yourself that, that 20 minutes, if nothing else. Um, make it easy for yourself to commit. So ways to do that are, you know, having it all in a little portable pouch like this makes it really easy because then you don't have the, the drudgery of going to your desk. You can just uh, sit on the couch. You can do both. You can watch Netflix. And I feel like I'm a commercial for Netflix because I keep saying that. Um, or Hulu or whatever your, you know, favorite streaming services, whatever, wherever you're, you're choosing to zone out. You can, you know, do this while you're sitting on the couch. So make it easy for yourself to commit in that way. Um, have a drawing buddy. That's uh, a great way to hold yourself accountable. A lot of people find it that they can't go to the gym unless um, they have a buddy join them at the gym. I'm definitely that way. Or if I'm not part of a, if I didn't sign up for a, you know, fitness class, it's hard to make myself go. So uh, joining a weekly meetup group could be the equivalent of that fitness class that you're sque squeezing in every every week. Um, and if it's just once a week, you know, that's still better than nothing. Anything's better than nothing. But I really want you to aim for the, the daily practice, the daily 20 minutes to maintain that, that muscle memory. Um, if you're just doing a, a weekly meetup group and there's online drawing meetup groups, or maybe there's a, you know, uh, in, in person or at a coffee shop or, you know, something like that, that you could join, um, maybe an outdoor coffee shop if you want to stay super safe. Um, or there's, you know, urban sketching groups. Uh, I've been even considering starting an urban sketching group online. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, keep checking my Instagram. I'll probably be posting about that pretty soon. Um, and then set a weekly goal for progress, not product. So um, don't worry about the product of what you're drawing. It's more about the progress that you're making. So goals for progress are, and I'll come back to these at the end of all of the drawing prompts I'm about to give you and just point out that all of the drawing prompts that I'm about to give you center around these ideas. It's really not about the product. It's about practicing looking. It's about developing your muscle memory. It's about 
getting to a place where your positive self-talk is louder than your judgment of what you're drawing and to where you're feeling as if any effort is good effort because it is. Um, so yeah, okay, so I'm gonna get to the, the drawing prompts now. So first one that I, uh, that I have here and we'll, we'll do some of these together is to just draw your surroundings. So I did all of these, like I said, while sitting on the couch, binging a show, starting about Friday night, I'd say. Um, and I tried to watch the clock. I didn't really, I didn't actually set the timer. I just, you know, kind of uh, kept in mind to, to not spend more than 20 minutes on any of these. So, you know, I was watching hour long episodes and I tried to switch to a new page uh, three times <laughs> in, in the hour. Um, so draw your surroundings. So I just drew what was in front of me. I had like a kid's toy on the floor and the rug and a uh, dresser, which is my TV stand, and then a lamp and a couple of plants there. And uh, I used a pen only here. So I only used my O3 or my, my O.3 illustration pen. I didn't use a pencil first. And so that's where the, you know, the lack of judgment comes in is as I was working like this, and I'll do an example of this together or with you guys in just a moment. I'm not gonna set the timer for 20 minutes. I'll probably do 10 minutes for all of these prompts so that we can squeeze in some examples here, maybe less um, before our hour is up. But when I made mistakes, like mistakes with perspective, I just kept going. Um, and I just sort of used a, a scribble technique to get past um, any moments that felt wonky to me. Uh, just, you know, kept adding more details or more shading techniques to, to cover those things up. Uh, that maybe would be considered, you know, quote unquote mistakes. So uh, that was my lamp and a couple of plants there, a couple of pillows that were laying on the floor, and then a vase and some, some deer antlers that I have on a, another table there. So that was just drawing my surroundings with a pen only and uh, not judging myself for any mistakes that I was making. And we'll, I'll do an example of one of those in just a moment. Uh, the next one was practicing patterns, lines, or glorified doodles. So this is definitely a callback to what we did last week in the lines and tones class, which you can find on YouTube now. Um, and I think uh, Nate maybe copied that link to uh, drop in the chat. So uh, it was on lines and tones and it was just on creating a variety of lines. So I literally just tried to make a straight line. And then whenever I hit a moment that wasn't straight, I followed the curve of that not straight line for a while. And then at the bottom, I did that quite a bit and I found that was kind of fun. So I, I kept doing it. And when that, the contrast of the curved lines with the straight lines starts to create this optical illusion, right? So you can play around with that. And that's a great way to practice uh, creating 3D forms, which was the very first class intro to graphite and drawing forms where we, we drew some still life items and then did the elevational lines on that, that 3D form. And I believe Nate has the, the link to that one as well. So that is a great way to practice elevational lines and contours. I mean, it feels like you're just doing a repetitive drill there uh, and you are, but it also helps to practice uh, creating three dimensions. Um, this one, I was kind of just glorifying a doodle. One doodle that I like to do a lot is to just make a circle using dots and then make another circle using dots around that. So it created a little sketchy mandala effect there, if you will. And then I just added a bunch of um, stippling dots surrounding that. And yes, this takes a lot of patience. And this one I probably did longer than 20 minutes just because I wanted those stippling dots to go around the whole circle. And I know I've mentioned a lot of the, the shading techniques thus far. Um, you can find all of the classes on uh, 
value shading techniques on YouTube as well. So we've got a class on tonal shading and I had uh, two classes on uh, that broke up hatching, cross hatching and stippling and scribbling. All of those are on YouTube under Artist Loft 101 and shading techniques. So those were the, the stippling dots that I added there. And again, just using my, my 0.3 pen and nothing else. So I'm not judging myself and just getting in some muscle memory practice for the day. Um, so then I did get a little more uh, skilled there and started drawing like a bit of a landscape because then I started to get inspired y'all like just like I said, you know, and the muse kind of struck and a lot of the work that I do in my personal work centers around abstracted landscapes. So then I started creating uh, these little abstract landscape uh, sketches with my pen. And that's, if you check out some of my abstract work, you can see how related to my abstract work that is, um, that I do with a lot of calligraphy inks. And um, this is also very similar to some of my abstract landscape work that I do that's centered around dreamscapes and, and things of that nature. So, but all of that was, some of those were 20 minutes, some of them were less, but I definitely put in 20 minutes at least, if not more, on all of these glorified doodles and practicing patterns. So uh, you can start with a pattern and just repeat the pattern over and over again, and then just kind of let your mind wander. You're still going to be getting that muscle memory practice in for the night. All right, another drawing prompt is to create a replica in your sketchbook. So a replica of a famous artwork. You're never going to have to worry about copyright laws as long as you go far enough back in the, um, you know, in your art history bank of, of artists. And so I did a, um, a replica of Starry Night and then a Monet uh, Haystacks. And you know, if this is just in your, your sketchbook and it's just for practice, copying another artist's work is a wonderful way to get your muscle memory practice in uh, for the day. And you know, then you don't really have to think too much about what you're doing because you're just copying the lines. And I thought it was so interesting how I never really noticed how much, it's kind of crazy that I didn't notice this, but how much, you know, what I do with my, uh, you know, repetitive lines uh, for for landscape backgrounds with my ink uh, can be very similar to what's going on in in Starry Night, the the curved, you know, the way that the lines in the sky repeat in a, a pattern. So, so that was that practice uh, creating replica and then blind contours. And we're going to do an example of all of these in just a moment. So if you're not familiar with a blind contour drawing, it is where the artist doesn't look at the paper while they're drawing. They only um, look at the subject that they're drawing. And so I did these just before the, the class started looking at my stack of or my pile of ink bottles here off to the side on my desk and then a, um, a cup full of paint brushes that's also here on my desk. And then this was the lamp that's behind me. Um, I just didn't do it, you know, but it's not about the product, right? So even though that does not look like a lamp necessarily, you know, those definitely kind of look like paint brushes and I can see the ink bottles in these. Uh, blind contour practice is never about um, the product. It's always about the, the looking and the muscle memory because you're, your eyes and your hand that's drawing are having a direct communication. And um, by not looking at your paper, you're freeing yourself up to, you know, just have that pure communication between your eyes and your, your drawing hand. And then the last prompt that I have for you tonight is to just make a mess. So I used my charcoal pencils for the, the blind contours. And then I used uh, the charcoal sticks really quick here to just draw some clouds and make a, a bit of a mess. And the thinking behind that is that I think when I make a mess, when I give myself permission to just make a mess in my, my practice for the day, that's when the muse really does show up and visit me. Because when I 
make my goal only to make a mess today, um, it's really easy to check that box and say I did it. And then I'm just working with, you know, all these ideas that are occurring to me and something else may occur to me as I go along. So I'm going to move on to just uh, demonstrating all of these drawing prompts. If there aren't any questions at this point that are jumping out, Nate. No, not particularly. I think we're all just focused and uh, getting down these very basic mental things so that we can we can get there. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and set a timer. We're 30 minutes into an hour long class. So we've got time. Um, let's see how many prompts do I have here? Five. So I'll do about uh, five minutes on my timer here. Or actually, let me do seven minutes for this first one. So I can squeeze in all of these with some time at the end. So if you guys want to take a pen with me, so I've got the the point three illustration pen. If you've got what was on the supply list, great. If you've got any illustration pen or any kind of pen, um, that works too. And so I'm just going to start drawing something on my desk. I'm not going to think about it at all. I'll start drawing those that cup with the, the paint brushes here. And so I'm just diving in, I'm not judging myself. I'm going slowly though, not worrying about that timer. This is why the kitchen timer can be nice or it can stress people out sometimes if they look at it and see that they have less and less time. It might be easier to set the timer on your phone and then put your phone aside but you could always set this timer and then put it where it's not in view either. So hopefully you're doing the same thing, just drawing whatever is in front of you. And I think the less you plan what you're gonna draw, the better, and just let whatever mistakes may happen, happen. One thing I like to do when I'm drawing with a pen only is I will hover with the pen a little bit so that I'm kind of training my hand in the, the muscle memory of whatever shape I'm trying to draw. Kind of mime the drawing before I put the pen down. So I hover for a second there and think about it and then draw the line. And I'm using a very implied line technique. I'm not necessarily doing a hard outline around all of these paint brushes. I'm letting my lines be kind of choppy and more implied. And there's an, an entire class on implied line from a while ago in this series, which you can also find on YouTube now. So don't worry about if something's overlapping and you didn't put it in front, you know, just power through whatever happens because this is not about the product. It's about the practice. I've made so many observations about just comparing and contrasting learning to draw and learning to play the guitar since I've been on this journey recently. And one of them is the fact that if I just practice the guitar while I'm sitting in front of the TV and I don't judge myself too much and I just sort of pick and play and, you know, do whatever I can. If it sounds terrible, you know, the TV's on or sometimes I even, you know, will practice with like other music playing in the background and I just tune out the music, but Might also, be, Oh, there we go. I was gonna say we're frozen for a second, but I think we're back. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Oh, it's saying my internet connection is unstable. 
Well, that's not good. All right, but I'm good now. I'm not frozen anymore. Not frozen from what I can see. Okay, good. Um, but I was just saying, you know, that is an advantage of playing the guitar, or playing an instrument, practicing an instrument versus the drawing, because if I play a bad chord, So you think we lost you again for a second here. Let's see if it catches up on its own. No, I haven't caught up yet. Sorry, folks, just letting it unfreeze itself here. One moment. Can't hear you on that one. I can see you, but I can't hear you. Can you hear me now, Nate? Yes, we can. Okay, geez. I'm just going to switch over to my phone only. Um, I think that's the best course of action because my I can use my phone's Wi-Fi. I guess my, um, my internet connection just failed on my computer. So sorry, guys. Um, okay, so I'm just going to move to the, the other side of my desk. Um, so now it, is that a good view? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's upside down, but we're going to make it work for this time. Oh, geez. Okay, let me go the other way with it. Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah. I didn't know if you had 360 degree control there. So that's great. Okay. All right. Well, my timer just ran out. So that was about a seven minute drawing. <laughs> um, but probably more like five since I, I ran out of time there. Okay, so I think I think I covered everything I wanted to cover while uh, talking about that drawing prompt. So yeah, just, you know, don't judge yourself. I think the, the joke that I was making was, you know, when I, I play a bad chord on the guitar, it just disappears. But when you're drawing and you draw what you consider to be a bad drawing, you got the documentation right there, right? So, and it's really easy to rip that page out of the, the sketchbook and throw that away. But if you do that, then you're judging yourself, right? You're calling that a bad drawing. And um, I say, keep everything that you do because then you can see the progress that you've made. Um, there's nothing more satisfying than looking back over the years and seeing how far I've come in my, my drawing skills. Um, I even posted on Instagram the other day, uh, a portrait that I did, a self-portrait when I was um, first starting out in um, my first drawing class in college at the age of 23 and then a self-portrait that I did this past year. And um, so I think it was a 16-year difference and it's pretty cool to see how much my skills have developed um, in that regard. Okay, so the next uh, drawing prompt was to practice the pattern lines or the, the glorified doodles. You can do this with anything it can be you know continuing on with the pen or I like using the the pen only I think so let me set a timer for another oh I'm doing five or six minutes here 20 minutes is a good standard I'm just doing less time now so that we can squeeze a bunch of demos in
So this one where you're just repeating the, the same line over and over again is very meditative and therapeutic in my opinion. And then the idea that you can just follow the curve of any mistakes that occur makes it where I almost want to make a mistake so that that can guide me into creating more of a curve. I'm going to go ahead and just make a curve on purpose. So hopefully you guys are doing this with me and I can see all of your lovely patterns or elaborate doodles that maybe come out of this practice right now. That every single one of these prompts can be done in 20 minutes or less, but I would hope that after your 20 minute timer goes off, you're going to be inspired to keep working. But if all you have is that 20 minutes, then, then, you, then you did it. You put your, your 20 minutes in for the day. So some other things that I like to talk about every time I, I bring up this, this subject in a class is just all the different ways that our, our brains work when it comes to feeling inspired, because there are some very common activities where a lot of people find themselves getting good ideas for, um, for their creative practice, and that is in the shower, when you're driving uh, your commute, or I think doing the dishes, not everybody agrees with me on that one, but um, all of those activities are things that, and I study a lot of neuroscience in my spare time because I'm just a, a big nerd, but a lot of those activities, um, you know, if you study the brain waves of a person when they're doing things like driving their commute, which they've driven every day for years or doing the dishes or taking a shower, you're, you're almost unconscious while you're doing those things because it's so automatic. You're on autopilot. And so that means that your mind is free to sort of wander and daydream. And we often come up with really great ideas when we're, we're doing those activities. And then I would say the opposite of that uh, I always like to say when you're sitting in front of the Netflix for the night, it's almost like a mental drool that's happening. You're definitely not engaging. <laughs> like maybe it's automatic, but it's also just like, you know, like Elvis has left the building. Like everything is just very checked out in that moment. So I think bringing your, your creative practice into those moments are a great way to kind of turn it around and get some, some good brain activity going when you might otherwise just be, you know, doing the, the mental drool. And then the, the even worse uh, moment than that is when you spend an hour looking for a show to watch on Netflix and you can't decide what you want to watch. So you end up just scrolling looking for something the whole time and it's like okay great I wasted an hour and I didn't even watch anything I mean there's just nothing more you know I don't know unproductive not that productivity is is the most important thing but I'm just saying you could have been drawing you could have been doing your drawing practice during that time um I I think it's kind of depressing when you're just doing the, the scroll and um, not even watching a show. So just like put on a show you can ignore in the background and practice, do some 
meditative line practice instead. Um, okay, I filled up my page and my clock didn't run out just yet. I'm going back and filling in some of these gaps. Any comments or questions jumping out at this point? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like really encouraging comments and comments about, you know, people mentioning that, you know, they can be really hard on themselves or super critical of themselves. Um, but it is a very encouraging and freeing feeling to sit, to not judge your own work, to turn your brain off for a second and, and just let go. Um, we did have one question as well about just going over uh, what the your sticky notes said there um, just real quick because someone wants to take some screenshots. Oh, okay. Hold on to this. Um, of all of them or one specific one? I'll just put them all there for a second. So these were the, the drawing prompts goals for progress and then accountability. And there's my, my timer just went off. Is that good? Yep, that's perfect, thank you. Okay, all right. So the next one on my list is, um, oh, what is it? I covered it up. Create a replica. Okay, so. This is where <clears throat> you'd want to look at a, a famous work of art, but I'm going to be a, a nerd and pull out one of my favorite things to uh, replicate. And that is, is if you, you check out my artwork, you'll, you know, obviously I'm a big fan of astronomy and uh, specifically quantum physics and neuroscience are really fascinating subjects to me as well. But when I first started out, I did a lot of replicas of, um, or when I first started kind of honing my, my personal work, I love the old um, astronomical prints from the, the turn of the century. So I've got a postcard here that is a drawing of an astrolabe. Um, and this is in the, just in a postcard book that I got of things like this. So I'm gonna set my timer for another, let's do six minutes. And then you can find an image of anything that you want to replicate for, for this practice. And I am gonna switch to pencil for this, just since I don't know that I can do everything I was, everything that's going on here with a pen without messing up too much. So I'm gonna use the H pencil to start to, to sketch the overall circle here. I might not finish this in five minutes, but this would be a good thing to come back to later when I'm sitting in front of the TV and I wanna get some more drawing practice in. And the wonderful thing about muscle memory is that once you've developed it, once you've really honed your skill, you can put it down for, you know, like I'm not gonna forget how to draw if I don't draw for a week. I'm not gonna forget if I don't draw for two or three weeks, but I am going to be tight. I am gonna not have the same, you know, loose, sketchy abilities. Everything that I'm, I'm drawing might be just a little stiff and tight if I don't draw for three weeks. And that definitely doesn't happen very often in my life as a as an art teaching artist, because if I'm not working on a, a commission or a project, um, you know, I'm teaching a class or a private lesson, or I'm drawing with my my kids. It's very unusual for me to go. You know, I would I would have to be ill to not draw for for a week or two, but I, I've done it definitely. There was, I think a couple weeks in 2020 when I realized, wow, I think there was one week I, last year where I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't drawn in a week. What's happening? But when you're just learning, it's very easy, you know, as I'm learning with the guitar to like for several days to go by and then it just becomes this daunting thing so I totally understand how easy it is to get discouraged and to put it down, but 
like I said, all progress is good progress. Any effort is good effort. So if at the end of you know, your 20 minutes, you don't like what you drew, you can go by these goals for project progress and check, you know, off the, the to-do list boxes. And if I, you know, really don't like my drawing at the end of 20 minutes, I can ask myself, did I practice looking? Well, yes. Did I practice developing some muscle memory? Yes, I did. Did I judge myself and keep my self-talk positive? That's debatable, right? But hopefully you did. Um, and did I, you know, make some effort? And if I did, then hooray, I did it. Any effort is good effort. So if all you've got to show for the end of your, your 20 minutes is a drawing you don't like, please hang on to it because there's nothing more gratifying than looking back on what you considered to be a bad effort 20 years later or even a year later, you know, if you're maintaining your, your practice. Um, when I taught middle school and high school, I was constantly pulling kids artwork out of the trash and they would, you know, think that I was the biggest dork ever for doing that because they thought it was bad. Or, you know, if, if I said some cheesy thing to them about how I valued their efforts, you know, they would just roll their eyes, but then if they, you know, did something later in the year that I felt like was an improvement or that they would think was an improvement on it. It was really fun to pull that out of my drawer and be like, see, look how far you've come. And oftentimes if I did that with a, a kid, they would ask to keep the drawing that they had tried to throw in the trash. So that didn't happen very often, but it did happen at least once or twice. Most of the time, they just went into my pile for examples to show the kids the next year. But then I also love to say, your mom would love to have that. <laughs> I can't believe you're throwing that in the trash. All right, I feel like I'm running out of my timer here, but I've made some pretty good progress on this astrolab, astrolobby. At least got the basic pattern of it down. There's lots of words inside of there. That would take me a very long time, but that would be a good practice later to fill in all of this. Okay, the next prompt that I have for you here is a uh, blind contour. So if you've never done a blind contour before, this is um, <clears throat> something that a device that a lot of artists and art teachers use to practice developing muscle memory and uh, sometimes to make beautiful works of art as well. A lot of, I mean, obviously um, people have made art that has, I don't know where I'm going with that statement, but uh, it's not just for practice. You can do lots of wonderful things with blind contours. And since this is just about uh, the practice, you can definitely cheat. Um, I love to monitor people when I'm teaching them this in a class and say, you know, to not cheat and to turn your body in your chair so that you're literally facing your body away from the table where your, uh, your paper is. Um, since you guys can't see me anymore and you can only see my desk, you'll have to just take my word for it that I'm not looking at my drawing paper. And I'm just gonna set a timer for two minutes here since we're running low on time. And I'm gonna draw those those ink bottles again. Actually, let me do something else across the room. Draw my, 
my chair on the other side of the room here. Could you also move it a little bit more to your right so we can just get a little bit more in the in the image? Thank yes. you so much. Perfect. Okay, is that All right, thank you. I know mm -hmm. I don't have my own view of the screen anymore. Okay, thank you, Nate. All right, so I am drawing my chair and I'm not looking at my paper. So if my voice is disappearing, it's because I'm turning my head away from the, the drawing paper and I'm going very slowly. And if you don't pick up your, I'm using the charcoal pencil. I'm using the hard charcoal pencil. If you go slowly and you don't pick up your, your pen or pencil or whatever you're using, it's easy to, or easier to not get lost. You're trying to draw all of the contours, so not just the outline of the, the subject, but all of the lines that make up that subject. And it's probably going to look crazy, and it's probably not going to look like the thing that you're drawing. but that is the whole point. All right, there's my chair. <laughs> um, did it. My ink bottles definitely looked a little more like ink bottles before. I feel like going back and showing those examples one more time. Where'd they go? Here are my blind contour ink bottles. Okay, so the last prompt that I had was to make a mess. So that's easy, easy to do. I'm just gonna take my charcoal sticks, which are very messy. And the soft one is gonna make the most mess. And I'll set a timer for just two or three minutes here. And just gonna sketch some clouds since that's my, my go-to subject matter. And just really get in there and fill those in and make a big mess with my charcoal. And so this is, like I said, really more about the, the mental break that you're giving yourself. If my goal is just to get messy, it's going to be really easy to do this. Another good way to combine uh, the blind contours and making a mess is another good exercise. Um, you could do your blind contours with your, your charcoal, and then everything that you're doing is going to get really messy really fast. You could overlap your drawings. I'm going to have an entire class on blind contours coming up um, later in this series, and it's going to be blind contour portraits, um, and that will be after a class where I talk about facial proportions um, first. So normally when I do blind contours, when I teach them, I love to, to draw faces um, with blind contours, but since I haven't taught portraits, facial proportions yet, I thought I, I wouldn't do faces tonight. So I'm just drawing still life objects, but stay tuned for, for that class on uh, both facial proportions and in blind contours. But you could combine those things to make a nice mess as well. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean my hands and switch back to my my view of you guys here. Am I upside down? Nope, you are good. I'm good. Okay, good. Um, so I'd love to see uh, some other examples, uh, everybody else's examples from the class tonight, from what you did from these prompts, if you were drawing along with me before we 
say good night. There's my timer going off. Um, can we spotlight some people, Nate, and see? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. There's one here. Excellent, Beth. Little bird drawing there, and I love that you took some notes on on my my. Looks tip. like a sword hilt there. Looks like or yeah, sword hilt model. I can't tell, but it looks really good otherwise. <laughs> she said no. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I Nate, I'm not the artist. Art is your lesson for you. You never try to guess what it is. If you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not the artist. All right, let's let's do a few more here. Um, very good. Very nice. Oh, I love your your charcoal. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, is that your replica? That feels like a, a comic, maybe. And see, look, I'm guessing what it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love. I can tell people are going in with the pen only, and that makes me so happy. Oh, there's the nice stippling heart. Mm hmm. Excellent. Very oh. nice. There we go. All right, let's go back here. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for, for joining me tonight. And hopefully our little snafu isn't going to mess up the recording too much. And you can check out this, you know, recording on YouTube tomorrow or on the uh, Michael's website uh, the next day. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing more examples of what you did. So if you want to tag me on uh, Instagram with your art, sometimes if you just tag it, make it with Michael's and Michael's classes, it'll, you know, show up in that, in that feed. But um, if you want me to see it, you can, you know, tag me directly at Adrian Hodge Art and I'll be sure to see your drawings because I, I love to see them. Um, thank you all so much again.